Hi, this is Zach Mir with the uh, US Chart Breakers here at Zach's Traders Cafe for Tuesday, the 28th of May. We've actually tested the old 5264 resistance that we had back in March, April, and that's become support for now anyway. And above that, on an end of day close basis, looking for further progress up to that uh, blue resistance line projection 5460. If we do break down, not expecting anything lower than 5180, which is the area of the 50 day moving average. Moving on to the NASDAQ, uh, the tech area is still uh, pretty hot, as you can see from the uh, trajectory of the NASDAQ. We gapped up uh, earlier in the month and uh, we've held above that gap. While we're above that and the old resistance area of 18,400, the previous peak, looking for further gains within that rising September trend channel. Initial target here of 19,500, which we're expecting by the end of next month or even sooner. And if there is any breakdown, the 50 day line there at 18,000. Uh, should provide support. That was also the old uh, March resistance line breakout area as well. And uh, hopefully that would uh, stem any losses. Moving on to the stocks and uh, starting off with uh, AI. We've got this uh, nice uh, saucer shaped reversal. Uh, I suppose it's a handle that we've got on the right hand side here. Uh, you could argue that it's a bull flag and ready to break out. Rising 50 day line as well off the low. So the longer we stay above uh, $2.00. 60, which is recent intraday support, the greater the chance of move to $6 plus by the end of next month at the top of that broadening triangle from back in December. But the RSI has been above neutral 50 for quite some time for the whole of uh, well, most of this month and that we gapped up through the 50 day line that tends to be a very strong uh, signal in terms of uh, the start of a potential rally. Moving on to another stock which uh, hopefully is in the limelight or will be in the limelight. Another gap uh, there that we had back at the end of March. It's taken a while for the shares to uh, take up the slack of that move, but we remained above old resistance there at $6 and uh, established a new support above that uh, initial 2024 resistance around uh, $9. The longer that remains the uh, state of affairs, the greater the chance of a move, not only breaking that April resistance line there around current levels, but also heading up towards uh, the top of that rising trend channel. $31 as soon as the end of next month. Yes, we're expecting something pretty strong there on this particular setup. A stock which uh, hopefully will be on the uh, move in a decent way as well is uh, Agbar Group. And uh, here you can see that we bounced after a little bear trap below $2. We bounced above the sharply rising 50 day moving average at $1.70. The longer we have no end of day close back below $2, the greater the chance of a retest of the uh, recent resistance $4 plus by the end of next month. Uh, an interesting setup uh, in terms of critical metals at the moment in the sense that we gap down and uh, temporarily uh, intraday on uh, Thursday broke the floor of that rising trend channel base uh, from March around $8.20 but above $8.20 looking for that resistance line there from March to break around $10 on an end of day close basis taking us up to as high as $14.60 by the end of next month. 50 day line also rising and that is helping the cause. A uh, new stock for us uh, coming up next, iPower. And uh, here we bounced off that falling support line projection from back in June and uh, that level there around $1.30. Uh, the longer we can stay on the right side of uh, Friday support, $1.50, the greater the chance of a retest of the intraday peak of this month as high as $3.48 by the end of next month and hopefully rather sooner than that. Next contender is Innovative and uh, here you can see it's a classic bear trap gap reverse. The market looking certainly the other way um, on Thursday but uh, gapped up sharply on Friday and above the old support there around $6.20 looking for the shares to return to the top of the range $8.50 plus by the end of next month. If you're cautious you wait for an end of day close back above the 50 day moving average at $6.60. Next contender is Moneyline, which we've looked at quite a lot. And uh, here you can see progress within that rising trend channel from uh, June last year, top of the channel there, heading for as high as uh, 108. And uh, we're looking for that while we remain above a recent broken resistance around 87 on an end of day close basis. We've had a RSI rebound off the neutral 50 level as well, which is uh, helping the cause. Minim is next and uh, here, uh, we're in a triangle formation, bouncing off the floor of the triangle there, that support line there from back in February, $3 above that, looking for an end of day close above the 50 day moving average at $4.70 to take us up to as high as $9 by the end of next month. I think there's been enough consolidation there over the last six months to uh, 
deserve a decent move to the upside, especially after the bear trap rebound from below the uh, April support there around $3.40. Uh, another new name coming up, uh, Merus, and uh, here uh, an unfilled gap through resistance, rising 50-day line as well. Uh, the support area on Friday, rather, $52.60, rather, and above that looking for a move towards $70 at the top of that rising trend channel from October. Early and end of day close back below that uh, $52.60 mark, really delaying the upside scenario there. Another new name is uh, Neocore, and uh, here a triangle base potentially, uptrend line on the RSI window. So we're expecting the shares to give us an end of day close above the 50 day moving average at $2.50, and then push on to the top of the triangle there at $4.30 as soon as the end of next month. RSI is already above the neutral 50 level, so that is a leading indicator on potential upside there. The next situation is Oclo, and uh, here. Very wide, a broadening, a broad uh, triangle there from back at the end of last year. Uh, the interesting part here, I suppose, is the way that we're back above uh, resistance on the way down at $9. Above that, we're looking for initially up to the 50-day line at $12. And then hopefully, by the end of next month, another spike towards the upper teens at uh, $18, $19 as a best-case scenario target. If you're cautious, want to see an end-of-day close back above the uh, pre-breakdown support area around $10.30 of which we are very close to at the moment. On to the last two. The first one is Ride, which we've looked at uh, quite a few times before. Here you can see that uh, we've had a breakout through the top of that rising trend channel that we identified uh, a few weeks back, uh, $8.40, the nominal top there. Above $8.40, looking for the upper parallel of that rising trend channel, currently pointing towards $13.40, which we're looking for by the end of next month or even sooner than that, in fact, the way things are going could be by the end of this month. Finishing off with uh, Singularity, and uh, here we have a, a triangle within a triangle. So the red triangle here, the near-term triangle, uh, the floor there, $3.60. Looking for a proper end-of-day close above the 50-day line, which I suppose we're just on at the moment. Above that at $4.70, looking for $5.60 over the next couple of weeks. But that failed gap fill and the bounce off the top of the gap there, $3.50. A very strong signal for a potential move to the upside. That's it for me today. More updates tomorrow.